All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. I thought I would make this video to give you guys some really good springtime tips, some things that you guys should be doing to the fig trees now that it is the spring, now that we're at the beginning, because a lot of these things that we do have a, a really good exponential effect down the road. So what we do now can dramatically affect your tree in the future. A lot of this you know, is gonna really, at the end of the day, affect, well, the amount of fruits that you guys get to enjoy. So listening to this video is really gonna net you guys, I think, a lot more fruits down the road. And really the number one tip, I think, because we're gonna talk about maybe five or six tips. The number one tip for any fig tree, I don't care if it's in the ground, if it's in a pot, these trees here just came out of the greenhouse. They've really been growing for about two months. We gave them a nice head start to the season. I don't care if you just took them out of the garage. The most important tip is light penetration. It's all about that light. So some of the things we've talked about in these other videos that we've been coming out with this spring is we've talked about the light, why it's so important. It all starts really with the pruning in the fall, or maybe you're gonna prune in the very early spring. It's kind of too late for that at this point if they've just woken up. Um, maybe it's not for you, but certainly the pruning is really going to dictate the form. And hopefully if you guys have good form, you're gonna get better light penetration. You're really trying to use your foresight here your knowledge to kind of see into the future of what these fig trees will look like down the road this season. Because we're trying to maximize the amount of light these trees can reach. If we, let's say, open this canopy a bit by bending the branches or staking the branches away from each other, that's my other really good tip, I've actually come out here and staked a lot of the new growth on these trees. I do, of course, really like the form on these, these trees. These are some of my more mature varieties. They're in larger pots, they have a lot more soil, but everything can be improved upon. Why not come out here and try to maximize these trees to their fullest potential? So I came out here, not only have I staked uh, this older wood from last year, maybe I need to bend the branches down a bit to open that canopy up, but I've also come out here and I've staked a lot of these branches that are new, right? The new branches form the fruits. So if I can maximize the, lot of, the amount of light on these new branches, I'll have as many fruits as I can. You can see right here, here's actually a new branch that I wanted to stake to kind of open this section of the tree up and allow this to get more light. You know, it's not always the case that our trees behave exactly the way they should. You know, um, nature does a great job, but a little intervention can go a long way, uh, especially if it's in the right direction. It can even go a long way if it's in the wrong direction. But, um, so that's my big tip. You can also do at this point some thinning, and this also relates to light, which is just a form of pruning. These trees at this point, they're so far advanced. They've been growing for like months now. I really wouldn't do much thinning at all. But if you really have some branches that you just know are gonna cause a problem later down the road with that uh, light that you're trying to achieve, then just break it off or prune it off. Uh, you can rub it off with your thumb. We've talked about all these topics in individual videos in really good detail. The second tip here actually is in the food. And uh, I think we can really get bogged down with the food and I've talked a lot about the fertilizer and I kind of go back and forth year after year at the end of the day though, and I think for a lot of us guys, you need to get a soil test first off to cover all your bases. That's really where the money's at because if you have a deficiency somewhere, you don't have enough NPK, let's say, then you're really gonna struggle. So make sure you cover all the micronutrients, uh, give them some calcium and magnesium. They love that stuff, um, particularly I should say, compared to the other micronutrients. And then, uh, you know, make sure they have enough NPK. I really get bogged down on the NPK ratio, but it doesn't really matter. Here's the biggest thing with the food. If you cover all your, your nutrients and you're consistent with it, you give them enough food, let's say, uh, you could just follow a schedule, put it in your phone, create a calendar uh, event, maybe once a week on a Saturday, and just say, all right, this Saturday, I'm gonna water my trees, give them some fertilizer, and then the next week I'm gonna do the same thing. And I'm gonna repeat that 
for four to six to eight weeks. And that's it, early in the season, now that it's the spring, now that these trees have been growing, uh, these guys that have been awake for a while, I gave them food like two months ago. I came in the greenhouse, gave them some slow release so that every time I water, they're getting that food and that's why they look so good and they have um, good node spacing on those branches. You can tell by the amount of nitrogen the tree has been receiving, uh, especially by that node spacing. So if it gets a little too tight, maybe it's time to dial up the, uh, the fertilizer a little bit or do some rejuvenation pruning in the future. So that's a big tip is the, the food. The third tip is actually the water. Uh, we need to water these in. As soon as they came out of the greenhouse, I gave them water and I watered them in real well. You know, water is actually the main regulator of the growth. It's not really the food. The food's gonna impact how much it grows uh, in terms of maybe the node spacing. Um, you know, nitrogen really is gonna regulate your production, but if you are watering your trees a lot, they're gonna grow a lot more than if you're not watering your trees. It's really that simple. In fact, the fig tree is really kind of like a cactus. If you stop watering it, it's light on water, the growth will significantly slow. So it's uh, really important at this time of the year because our fruits, like I said, they form on that new growth. If we want to have more fruits, we need to water our trees more. It's really, really that simple. So water is pretty critical at this time of the year. Once the fruits form, we'll dial that back. We won't have to worry about it nearly as much. Uh, the next step here is maybe we need to add a little bit more soil or care for the soil in some way. Uh, we've added our fertilizer, but maybe we need to top them off a little bit. Maybe we could add some mulch. Maybe uh, where you guys live, it's very warm and you're actually trying to decrease the soil temperatures. Add some mulch. Um, add some organic material to your trees. Care about the soil in some way. Also eliminate any competition. So among these potted trees I have here, we have some weeds. If there are any weeds, just come in here and pull them right out. Um, we don't want to have any competition for these trees. Uh, the next big thing that we can do here, guys, uh, let me just take you on a little trip because we actually have a number of things going on on the patio in terms of propagation. So this is really the time when you guys are thinking about propagating is pretty much early in the season. We're gonna do our grafting. We're gonna do um, our air layering. So here's actually a bin I have here specifically for some grafts that I've done. You can see those really small grafts. If you wanna propagate a tree in any sense, now is kind of the time. Now that we're getting these trees awake and they have enough soil temperatures, right? We wanna make sure the soil temperatures are around 70 to 80. That's when we're really gonna have the most success when it comes to grafting, when it comes to air layering, um, even rooting as we guys, we have down here in this little propagation area. I have a number, I mean a ton of fig trees down here that we've just stuck in soil. The soil's really starting to warm up and they're all really leafing out. Uh, what's really critical though is this, this um, plastic over top, just to make sure that we can regulate exactly how much rain, how much water, I should say, those trees are gonna receive. So that's kind of it here. Whether it's a young tree, an old tree, those are really the five tips, the five things that you guys can be doing at this point of the season now that things are just now waking up. Here's actually some of the products I've been using. We have lime and Epsom salts. Here's our soil, it's hopefully well draining. Here's some chicken manure I've been using this year instead of the slow release. We even have some organic fertilizer. So yeah, whatever it is that you guys need to do to get your, your trees happy and healthy this time of the year, it really goes a long way. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. We'll see you soon. Hit that subscribe button for me and check out the other videos we've done now on our fig trees. All right, take care guys.